Right, what a way to start the Wayne All Show this evening. Hello, hello, and welcome. Thank you to everyone who's tuning in to what is going to be a busy but great edition of the show. Yes, indeed. Want to say hello and welcome to everyone listening on Linkage Radio 101.75, 104.5 FM, Hype FM. South Florida, what's good? Frankie Lakes and the crew, Clark TV Network, Chester Clark and your audience, Viscosity Blend, Rupi Tida Blender, and your audience. Welcome to everyone listening on Island Worldwide, the power of music. Shout out to the Sutherlands, Reggae Vibes Radio, family all the way. Bless up Reggae Vibes family, Yard Flow TV, Energy Radio 1, Mr. Fenton Troy, and his audience, you choose radiocom.com, DJ VJ Smiles, Ross Dugal, Kimon, how we doing over there, family? Fresh FM Radio London, catch me every Thursday evening, 6.30 Atlanta, EST time, and you'll hear my edition of the Wayne Hall Show on Fresh FM Radio. If you're watching on Restream, YouTube, IG, thewaynehallshow.com, or on 
Facebook Live. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Wayne All Show this evening. It is indeed a pleasure to have every one of you kicking it off with George Prophet. Roll with me this evening. Brand new one from Singer Ari. There's a place. Here we go. There is a place. A place. A place up there. Yeah. So roll with me. Oh, well, if you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break You're the kind who takes the time Help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you If you stand you up for those don't know The Wayne Hall Show, where information meets music Pull up on the front top, Miss Ali, to beat them too bad. There is a place, a place up there. So roll the people. Oh, well, if you give a little more than you take. And if you try to fix more than you break. You're the kind who takes the time Help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you If you stand up for those down on their knees Lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light And give sight to those who lost their way There's a place for people like you I've heard of in the streets are made of gold And when you get there There's a hand to hold I believe when your days don't hear it through There's a place for people like you If you walk around with your heart on your sleeve change you wanna see oh yes if you lay down your life for love so someone could be safe there's a place up there for people like you i've heard of in the streets are made of gold and when you get there there's a There's a place up there for people like you. There yes. is a place up there for people like you. There is a place up there for people like you. There is a place up there for people like you. I know you're out there doing what you do. That's right, brand new from uh, Singer Irie. There's a place. Uh, and that's always a touching song. Can be quite emotional. One that sends you into deep reflection, right? Want to say good evening again and welcome to everyone checking out the Wayne All Show right now. Our first guest is Mr. Dean Roden. He's up in about three minutes or so. And he's going to share with us his upcoming gospel concert and he's inviting us to. Hey, share his journey under the reggae tree. You believe that? There is a journey about under the reggae tree that we can hear about tonight. In the meantime, da, let's get some Dan G in here. Where you say Dan G? Where you say Dan G?
This corrupt system, it needs to rearrange. We need a change. We need a change. A full time now, we turn a different page. When me say change, me mean all kind of ways. Like decrease the tax and increase the peers. Tired for work with us, minimum wage. Been too long, this tribulation. We have yes, it for months and days. You politician, Mr. Big Man. Why you want poor people cry tears over the ears? We need a change. We need a change. This corrupt system. It needs to rearrange. We need a change. We need a change. Our full time now, we turn a different page. To all the things that we not like it. Hey, yeah. Them take no my style out of the market. That's right. Jah know me no know I go on. Too much confusion. Them beat up the poor taxi man. Mm-hmm. This corrupt system, it needs to rearrange. We need a change. We need a change. Our full time now, we turn a different page. We need to take a stand. Certain things need to stop. As a queen, another get a new job. When you hear from the show, them get killed by cop. It's our next innocent life that make we demonstrate. We cannot live in a distance. Entire place never steer. That's why I just attack the truth and the youths. Free life on a different angle. Don't get caught in Babylon triangle. No easy in a the concrete jungle. Say it no simple. We need a change. We need a change. This corrupt system, it needs to be. That's right. The corrupt system needs to be rearranged. We need a change. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you so much for tuning in to the Wayne All Show this year evening on your radio. Again, big up to all the ones on the platforms. Linkage, Hyperfim, Clark TV, Viscosity Blend, Island Worldwide, Reggae Vibes Radio, Yard Flow TV, Energy Radio 1, Fresh FM. I'm also going to say a big shout out to everyone on Facebook Live right now. Let me go over. And start with the newest to the oldest, right? Want to say a big shout out to, and welcome to Sparky Melody. Salute you too. Andrea M- Brown McNeish. Good evening, Andrea. Good to see you. Selville Grant. Hello. Natalie Sky Voice Lawrence. Welcome. Jessica Serrano and Kiwi. Big up on herself. <laughs> Mary, Mary Randall. Christine Randall. Bless up CR. Thank you so much. Thank you for your dedication to the Wayne All Show. Good to see you. All right. And everyone else who's joined us. George Prophet, I see you. All right. Good to see you all, ladies and gentlemen. Let me go over to this other channel right here. Make sure I leave no one out. (laughs) I got to make sure I got you all. All right. Before I get into my conversation with Mr. Dean Roden. But before I do that, let me make sure I got my Facebook Live on the Wayne All personal page checked out. All right. I see we have. All right. Let's see. We have over here. Wayne L. Hall. You see, I'm going to stay busy with my own stuff. Too many, right? <laughs> all right. So over here. Yeah, man. I got a few folks I want to shout out on here, too. I saw them earlier. Mm-hmm. All right. All right, technology playing games. There we go, too. Tracy and Clark, George Prophet, and Timothy Kinney. All right, bless up, bless up. Thank you all for tuning in. Let me go over to YouTube and see. <laughs> oh, this is interesting. And see who's on YouTube. Got a shout out Super Sessions with Swen. Happy Wednesday, Super Sue. Yeah, man. Looking forward to the ladies' discussion tonight. So am I. Super Sue. By the way, big shout out to Auntie Paulette and Miss Marcia and Theo and everybody else checking out the Wayne All Show. <laughs> Lord of mercy. Don't sue me, Sue. And don't sue me like your name says. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dean Roden is waiting. I'm going to go on over 
and uh, um, talk to him about his upcoming event. But more so, just a quick intro into what he is about right here on the Wayne All Show. So let me scroll on down to Zoom land here. And uh, there he is on your screen, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me see. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Dean, good evening. How are you? Good evening. Good evening, my brother. It's an honor and it's a privilege to be on this show here tonight. No, you're globally so tonight, morning, this morning, and I'm hearing up, uh, some feedback in your background. Yeah, so I'm hearing a little bit of sound in your background there, Dean. You have something on listening or no? No, I'm not. Okay, listening, no. don't worry about it then. Yeah, we'll see if it goes away. All right, I'll check here again shortly. All right, so how are you, my brother? Yeah, man, it's a pleasure. It's an honor to be on this platform. And, um, you know, wish you all the best, man. You're doing a fantastic job. I want to thank you for having me this, this day. I know you're globally, you're morning, noon, and night. So, um, <laughs> respect, man. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. Now, um, ladies and gentlemen, Dean hosts a show, and I'm trying to find your bio real quick, Dean. Um, you know, I'm multitasking. So, ladies and gentlemen, just a little bit about him. He's, he's Kingstonian, a man, a countryman like me. So, Dean is from Kingston, presently resides in East Rochester, New York, bachelor's degree um, from uh, Charter Oak State College. He's the father of two boys and is the CEO and founder of Let's Talk Under the Reggae Tree Foundation. And uh, Dean was the program coordinator of the Adult Literacy Program at the Center for Urban Research, Education, and Training. He's a recipient of the 100 Men of Color Award. He's a citizenship guide and instructs immigrants who are legal permanent residents and wish to become naturalized United States citizens. Dean has also worked as an assistant teacher at Jumoko, Jumo, and he'll fix that for me if I messed it up, Jumo Academy Middle School in Hartford, Connecticut. He has been hosting the virtual Zoom meeting for the Greater Augustown Community Development Council CDC meetings and uh, uh, since 2021 to the present. Dean was a scout leader, all right? He's also a scout leader. He has been teaching good citizenship to children for a while and adults alike. He was appointed by the City Council of Hartford, Connecticut to serve as commissioner on refugee and immigrant affairs for, for a term of two years, 2014, to 2016. He has over 30 years experience of teaching and training young people and adults in the Boy Scouts movement in an international, as an international Boy Scout leader. He's also, uh, um, this, uh, he says, despite his disability from spinal surgery and radiation therapy for, his, uh, for cancer, he had survived. He's still committed to continue his service to the community. Dean, so much, so quick. I had to let the audience know a little bit about your background. Thanks again for coming on. After all that, man, <laughs> where do we start? No, you know, our mission is just to help one more person today, tomorrow, today. And that's the greatest achievement I seek for on a daily basis. I'm sorry, Dean. Yeah, was making sure audience could hear you. So um, <laughs> you said what on a daily basis? Sorry. Yeah, what I said, you know, despite of all those um, achievements, my greatest achievement is to assist a young person mainly or a person for tomorrow's future. You know, that's our goal and that's a part of my medication and my remedy for being alive today. You know, I was told if I don't continue giving service, that that's, that's the greatest mission we have on this earth. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. So um, uh, I'll say this much. Okay, let's see here. Make sure we try that again. I'm trying that again, VJ Smiles. I saw your note. All right. So, Dean, which brings us to the reggae tree? Because mm -hmm. one of the hats you've worn and is currently wearing is the, um, the you know, under the reggae tree um, movement. Tell us about yes. that. Well, um, 
being an ambassador for Jamaica in scouting, I've been representing Jamaica in scouting for the past 30 years. When I go to a camp, you know, I that's where I discover reggae was in the Nelson Dictionary. You know, someone in the state bring a dictionary and said, do you know where reggae was originated from? First time I knew it, it was from Jamaica. And reggae has always been a part of me. You know, Bob Mall used to come next door to me to have lunch with Sangi Davis, you know. And cut long story short, I went on a platform during the during the pandemic. It was Rudy Page, Let's Make Connection. Yeah. And they, <laughs> there was a young lady, lady by the name of Diana, Diana. And they were talking about the reggae tree with Kwaku that came from Africa and went to England. And I said, wow. Because, you know, I wanted to start a program which was like I grew up playing marble under the mango tree, under the guinea tree. So I said that would be nice to take the reggae tree to our community because that's where, was where most of the reggae music originated from Hermitage. Hermitage, Augustown, you know, the Duane Stephen, Prilly Hamilton. So I said, let's go under the reggae tree. You know, I grew up on the corner, under the, on, you know, under the mango tree, playing marble gig. So I said, let me have, so I started it with Uncle Dean. Let's go on the corner with Uncle Dean under the reggae tree. But it was too long, you know, so I we cut the, 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 the name of it um, to the under the reggae tree. And then we have different speakers to come and talk. So we said, let's talk under the reggae tree. And basically what we do, um, sometimes as adults, we tend to want to have our, our children be what we are or what you know some want to be doctors some want to be lawyer so what the program entail is to allow young people to come on the program and tell us it's a platform for young people to talk freely what they want to be when they grow up so i have over last year since i've started three years ago we have mm -hmm. over 100 young people from across the globe from we have people from england yes. canada mm -hmm. jamaica and what they do, they tell us what they want to be. So we have several youngsters want to be doctors, want okay. to be lawyer, yeah. we have a prime minister. Oh. We have one young lady want to be the first governor general. So what we do, they dressed up as a prime minister. They dressed up as a police, not a police officer, but he wants to be the commissioner of police. And they send the clippings to me. So what we do, as we, have, we believe that you know, young people need something to do and somewhere to go and they need someone to show them how. So what we do, we have professional doctors, professional lawyers, professional, you know, so we wanna meet, you know, so each person, we have that professional person to mentor and to talk to these young people and tell them what it was like their age. So that's what basically what they, the, the program deals with. Great, Dean, wow, that's a lot. And, um, you know, hats off to you, man. You're telling me thanks for what I do. Thank you for all you do there. But what you do does need funding, right? Does yes. need funding. <laughs> and behind you is a big banner that says Global Youth Educational and Community Development Program Mission Trip May 24, Black History Month Celebration, etc., etc. And then on this weekend, there's a big fundraising event coming up. So tell us real quick about... Um, all that yeah well all those artwork i drew all of those really all of those and the artists these i have the bunny whaler and these are for sale for funding that bunny whaler was signed by bunny whaler himself when he was in artford and i gave bunny whaler a copy um bob marley i you know i drew bob marley like this this like last month i drew bob marley and um marcus garvey was signed by Dr. Julian Garvey in Connecticut when yeah. I was at, at the function. And then Luciana, I also drew Luciana, and they also have a copy of this. So I gave one to them and I have it. So, you know, and um, so I drew all of those. You know, I did a course in art and I drew the Obama in 1987. But what happened, we are going to be going, May is Child's Month. And when I was in Jamaica, I would have a function in, in Mandela Park with Scout Cadet Girl Guide. Because what I believe, I believe in intervention, and these are the programs that we need to intervene by dealing with our young people. So we're going to be having meeting with young people in the child's month. So we're going to go to the scout, the girl guide, all these youth group, police youth club, 
in Jamaica. So we're going to be in Jamaica for two weeks, May 14th to May, May, May 30th. And each child that comes on the program, we prepare what is called a welcome kit. So once they sign in, we have over 100 kids with the permission of their parents. So we're going to be giving them a, a, a welcome kit, with con which consists of a, a drawstring bag, a water bottle. And they get their different, we try to give them incentive. The scouts, yes. they need tents, they need they need compass. Uh -huh. So we're going to be taking down, we take down all these things. So we're going to be distributing it. Um, two of our major projects will be, uh, we're going to be building robot, the STEM program in between Hermitage and Augustown. Those five communities, Hermitage, Augustown, Goldsmith Villa, African Garden, and Bedward Garden. Hopefully, we'd like to build it in the square of Bryce, where we have at least 50 people. And there's a young man who do robotic in Jamaica. He's going to be supervising it. And we have three persons. We have a gentleman by the name of Jimmy Matt. He's a founder of Jimmy, Jimmy Matt Foundation. He has never been to Jamaica before. It is his first time going to Jamaica. And he's the one that sponsored that robotic thing. Yeah. And we also have a guy named Raven. He has never been to Jamaica. Mm. So we have like four persons who have never been to Jamaica. Interesting. And believe it or not, they said I want to go by Judgment Yard. They want to know where Sis lies. So we're going to be having lunch in Judgment Yard. We're going to be going where Bob Marley normally meets on Friday at the 12 tribe of Israel, Sangi Davis, who is a very good friend of mine. He wrote the song, um, Life is One Big Road. We're going to meet Sangi, and Sangi is going to be taking us you know, to 12 tribe. You know, we're going to be having dinner there and the Bob Marley Museum. But And we have a member from Canada and the UK will be um, accompanying us. You know, as usual, Rudy always give us his support. Support and he's also right. planned to, you know, been supporting us with the Windrush program. Okay. Wow. Lots, lots, lots going on there. So, Dean, in lieu of time, please take us about, talk to us about the upcoming show this weekend. All right. This Saturday, we're going to be having a gospel concert and you can pay online. You know, you can, once you go on our website, let's talk on the regulatory upcoming event. The information is there. Um, ticket, you know, we're going to be having two set of tickets. If you're in Jamaica, information will tell you where you can buy it in Jamaica. If you're in, in the U.S., you can pay it online also. So our mission is to have a, being, being a global program. So we're going to be having artists from the U.S., Antigua, Cayman, and it's all via Zoom. So we're going to be having it this Saturday, um, the day after my birthday. And I've been said I've been I will be celebrating um 40 years of community service. So it's a celebration. And the, the mission is to assist us when we are in Jamaica with all these these things and to get a clearance with our material that we are we're taking down. Awesome. I just put the flyer on the screen for the audience to see. There it is again, ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk under the Regatory Foundation online global gospel showcase. And it says local and international gospel singers. And uh, you've heard from Mr. Dean Roden right now, 40 years of community development service. Dean, please tell me how I can donate if I can't buy a ticket to come see this event. It's also on the website. You could go to Let's Talk under the Reggae Tree upcoming event and you scroll down to donate. You know, there's a there's a link. Awesome. Um, but once you Google it, you say donate and it will take you right to the cash app um website and great, if you want to do it by whatsapp What's... all information is on the website do you have the cash app andy um the cash app it's the dollar sign slow down slow down Do i'm typing it in the chat on social media dollar sign yeah it, and you reggae u r e g g a e t t that's you know and then you get you know abbreviation dean road that is the, our foundation Cash so up. you reggae T. That's, that's it. it. Yeah, the dollar sign, okay. you know. You reggae T. All right, you reggae T. All right. Mm -hmm. Um to so and my my phone number is eight six zero four six. All right, hold on, hold on. Because I'm gonna type that too, since you caught me before I hit post. Telephone. Uh, oh Lord, I hit accidentally hit post. <laughs> Okay, what's telephone? 860 860 
462 462 5656 5656 awesome all right cool all and right so so under the reggae she was a bird from and i mean rudy make connection works program and we want to thank you know rudy want to thank um want to thank you thank you for what you've been doing and for allowing me you know in the short notice to come on your program you no know? And we're going to be having Sasha, sister Sasha. She was there, who was my neighbor. I you know, I have her proud to know that I was one of the first persons when I gave her an award in Jamaica. And we see how she has Excel. She's also going to be on the concert. So thank you very much. And to all our supporters, we want to just thank the world because we have been getting wonderful support from the world. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Dean. It's a tight show tonight. I need to bring you back to it, talk more about those great service years of service and some of the things you do under the reggae tree down there in august town and in other places coming up much appreciated thank you all the best with your online gospel concert i did drop your phone number and the dollar sign in the chat hopefully you'll get some donations from some of the viewing audience before or even after sunday to continue yeah, your thank hard you, work thank you. dean uh -huh. Yes. Thank you. I just, I just wanted to know. It said Nash that just for August on the project might be in August on this time, but yeah, we are, we are globally, you go out. We have people from the Neat, West Milan, all over yes, that man. is on the program. Thank you very much. That's yes, I, yeah. that's why I said another yes. place is to come. <laughs> yes, sir. yes, Dean. Take much. care. Appreciate you, my brother. Thank all you. the best in all you do. You're welcome. You, Rondell Village Resort and Spa is a stunning beachfront resort located on the Grills Seven Mile Beach in Jamaica. Rondell Village offers a perfect blend of luxury and relaxation. Marked by its pristine white sand beaches, crystal clear water, and lush tropical surroundings. Choose from our one, two, or three bedroom villas, each with its private jacuzzi and the option of a private chef. Enjoy our fine restaurants, beach bar, village spa and salon our outdoor pools and jacuzzis are open daily planning a wedding family reunion or simply getting away rondell village is the perfect destination this exclusive family-owned beachfront resort awaits you for reservations call 876-957-4413 or 800-544-5979 or visit info at rondellvillage.com or their website rondellvillage.com see you soon at rondell village Resort in the Grill. Hey man, Atlanta, this is your main man, J. Henry, live. And I want to invite you to come hang out with me and a couple of my friends, Andre Jackson, Danny Clay, and Jamal Dukes, as we pay tribute to the iconic voices, Barry White, Teddy Pendergrass, Luther Vandross, and Donnie Hathaway. Live Friday, April 5th at the Atrium in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Details are on the flyer. Tickets are available now. I want to see your face in the place. Yeah, baby. It's gonna be ecstasy. Yes. All right, y'all. I'm telling you. Later. Oh my gosh, ladies and gentlemen, when I tell you I am looking forward to that event. I'm so looking forward to that event there with Jay Henry. He's going to be up in 10 minutes after we get through with Mr. Anthony Turner to talk about the atrium. Right now, it's time to say welcome, Sir Turner. How are you? Hold on. I need to make sure I hear Anthony. Okay. Anthony, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. All right. How are you doing? You hear me? Yeah, man, loud and clear I'm now. I'm curious about this thing that you're talking about. What is it? <laughs> what, J. Henry? Yeah, and friends? Yeah. Okay, so let me jump over to my flyers so I can tell you more about that. This, on April 5th here in Atlanta at the Atrium, it, it's, it's um, Jamar Dukes, Andre Jackson, and Danny Clares. They all sound just like the artists. They're paying tribute to mm -hmm. Barry White, Luther Vandross, oh. Teddy Pendergast, and Donny wow. Hathaway. When I tell you, wow. he's going to be on at, uh, right after you at, at 8.45. You're my favorite artist. Yeah. I'm not missing this show, man. I'm not missing <laughs> this show, I tell you. So. <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. Maybe I, need to, maybe I need to check that out. But 
Yes, I'll ask you if you're supposed to, to make the link, and I know uh, there's some technical issues and we never made a link, but yeah, I was actually in Jamaica uh, went the week before Boys and Girls Championship, and yeah. we definitely want to say congratulations to Kingston College for winning Boys Champs, and certainly to Edwin Allen for winning the females, the girls championship and it was an exciting uh, championship as always. But I was there the weekend before for the elite weekend and I'm sure you probably saw some of the love the pictures and the videos and all the great things that happened. It was a spectacular event. It's two individual promoters that came together to host this uh, very first time they're doing it in Jamaica, Blue and Bougie. Which is yeah. an all blue event, and it you know it has been happening here in the U.S. from 2017 in New York. Why it's Jamaica this time. year? Uh well, this you know the two promoters got together. There are two big promoters here in New York, and the feel that you know, he, he, as they say, dance at broad. <laughs> they want to say every dance I had before you dance abroad, <laughs> but they've been dancing. Here in the U.S., they were dance abroad for a while now, maybe, you know, seven, eight years. So they said they wanted to go to Jamaica and dance a yard, and that is exactly what they did. And uh, as I said, two promoters and all blue, which happened on uh, March 16th, and the all white was on March 17th. It happened at the iconic Devon House in Kingston. And if you've never been to Devon House, when it's set up and decorated, for an outside event. Well, when I walked into that park, I couldn't believe the way it was transformed. I mean, wow. we know Devon House have really nice green lawn and the whole backdrop, but when yeah. it's lighted, backlighted with the blue lights and really, really looks spectacular. And I mean, you know, the cabanas, the, everything, it was really decorated to the T. And, you know, and the first event on Saturday started off at five. People said, boy, that's suicidal because nobody goes to events in Jamaica early. Normally, not before 11, 12, even 1 o'clock. Some people, mm -hmm. that's the time that oh they get gosh. ready. Yeah. This is an event that started at five and by 11 it was done. So, And this was on a Saturday evening nevertheless. And I mean, when I got there at about six o'clock, people were lined up in their blue <laughs> In the full blow. Wow. And yes, so so by seven o'clock it was in full effect and Love it. dancing and you know, uh, they had some one DJ came from the US on the Saturday night and the other ones are local DJs and really uh, you know, people had a grand time. And then uh, uh Richie Stevens who, you know, came at my invitation and he was just there not to perform but the vibes was just so right that he said, you know, I need to take the mic and bless the place. And he See, came yeah. on and gave them a Luther Vandross song, <laughs> I'd rather. <laughs> Have hard times with you. <laughs> yeah, man, and that bust the place. And then he did his perennial favorite, uh, which is, I forget the name of the song. But, uh, you know, fight, no, it wasn't Fight Back. It was one of his big songs. So, But it was really nice. Then on Sunday... You know, there was, of course, the all-white. And the all-white actually turned out to be the bigger of the two events because, you know, Sunday evening, people go to church Sunday morning, come home, meet them Sunday dinner, and then Sunday evening at 5 o'clock, they're ready to hang out. And they came out in large numbers, man. And I tell you, really nice party. But I have to give it to DJ Roy from New York, Road International, a man who celebrated 40 years last year in the industry. DJ Roy took the DJs in Jamaica to school and to <laughs> university. And back watch it and now, Anthony. Them. Watch it now. Watch it now. <laughs> no, nothing. We're not taking away anything from the Jamaican DJs. But <laughs> DJ Roy really brought it in a big way. And it's not just the selection of music. The way he interacted with the crowd. And I mean, it was a cross-section of patrons. There. So he had some young ones. And then he had some middle-aged ones and some a little older. And he had the young folks dancing, skia, 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 skia. Wow. <laughs> and then when it came time for the young music and the young people thing, the drift, he had some of the, the 50 and 60 year olds doing the drift. And to be able to do that 
it no, it take a special skill. So he actually left from behind the turntable. He went out in the crowd and engaged them in a way that I mean I know he's good, but the way he he interacted and engaged with them and I tell you, people had a blast. They had fun. I mean, I've never for a long time I haven't seen people had so much fun and know that it's gone. And I mean people are coming in people from Atlanta, you're in the woods. There are a couple of people from Atlanta, a couple of people from New York. From uh, well, New York, of course, was there in the house, but some South Florida, lots of folks from South Florida. I met her, a young lady. Uh, she was actually celebrating her birthday in Nadia Clark, and she was coming all the way from Houston, Texas, and she said she came with four of her friends, and she said, Anthony, I had about 14 friends that I could have invited, but you know, it's the first time I'm coming so I didn't want to overdo it but she said next year I'll be there and I'm carrying all of my single girls from at, from Houston Texas I met another gentleman who lives in Jamaica and he was saying Anthony this party has legs to stand on this is that's for meeting Jamaicans and he said champs weekend in Kingston, there are no weekend events. When you talk about BRT and some, BRT and some of the other events, weekend, you know, vacation type events, they all happen in either Nigril or Montego Bay or St. Anne's Ochi. This is like one of the first weekend events that was happening in Kingston. And then it happened the weekend before Champs. The guy told me, I have 16 friends coming in for Champs on Tuesday. He said, if I just told them, you guys need to come in on Friday, they all could be here. So, I mean, I know you're a sportsman, and yeah. a lot of people, not everybody knows that you're a big sportsman. True. So if next year you're going for champs, then you have to put the elite weekend, and it's always the weekend before champs. Oh, so. okay, okay. Good to know, good to yeah. know, good to but, know. Yes, so it was, the first board was one of the sponsors, and... They, you know, I mean, they were using this first event to see what the offering was. And based on what I heard and saw, they will be back for sure in 2025. So I just wanted to let you guys know. And for folks who want to, you know, just check out the website, it's theeliteweekend.com, theeliteweekend.com. And you'll see, or if you go on social media and search The Elite Weekend, you'll see some of the fabulous pictures and the videos that people are just gushing over. Awesome. Right? Love it. Love it. Anthony, real quick, Arama lived up to expectations wow, pretty much for course. the most part. The acts were great and um, they, 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 they had TJ performing live. So I got to see him wow. and his dancer the doing the drift. Yeah. So we drifted into some fun right there. Freddie was my personal mm, highlight. Wow, I saw that. I'm putting together that. a quick little um, three, four minute video of my my highlight of Irama, which was Freddie. Mm. To see Freddie wow. was like everything. And then the tribute and his rolling in on his wheelchair and uh, standing up and when standing he received his award. His award. Uh, yeah, I'm going to release that Bob. video soon, courtesy mm. of the Wayne All Show and Super Sessions with Sue and So. But it was great overall. Lots of awardees. Lots of great mm -hmm. awards. The acts were awesome. Lots of African acts. And, um, really? Great, yes. Wow. Quite a few African acts, male, male and female. So it was pretty good. Yeah, man. And we, mm -hmm. the superstars were there as always. The red carpet is always an, an adrenaline rush at Irama. And it lived mm -hmm. up to that. So that's my two cents real quick. My next guest is standing by Anthony. It's a packed show tonight. Listen to this conversation wow. coming up. And I'll see you in Atlanta on April 5. <laughs> all right you take care man. oh All big up anthony yes sir all right ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for staying with the wayne all show tonight and uh let me make sure i bring in my next guest here let's see mr j henry yep let's bring him in and uh, while we're waiting on mr henry to come in uh let's see uh, let's do this. Hey, the Atlanta, this is your main man, J. Henry, live. And I want to invite you to come hang out with me and a couple of my friends, Andre Jackson, Danny Clay, and Jamal Dukes, as we pay tribute 
to the iconic voices, Barry White, Teddy Pendergrass, Luther Vandross, and Donny Hathaway. Live, Friday, April 5th, at the Atrium in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Details are on the flyer. Tickets are available now. I want to see your face in the place. Yeah, baby. It's going to be ecstasy, yes. All right, y'all. I'll see you later. The man says, I'll see you later. <laughs> it's going to be ecstasy. All right, hold on, everybody. Let me... Uh... Okay, so Mr. J. Henry is in. Let me go over here to Zoom and close that window real quick. All right, yep. J. Henry. Hey there, how are you? <laughs> Whoa, ladies and gentlemen, did you all hear that? Did you all hear that? He's not even, he's not even making an effort to sound like that. Come on now, man. What did you do? What did you do with Barry White? How do you have, how do you have Barry White coming out through your voice? Oh my gosh! You know what's funny, Wayne? I um, heard Barry, Barry White, White for the first time when I was about eight years old, listening to Secret Garden. And when I heard his voice, I said, "At eight years old, man, I want to sound like that." And one day I woke up at fourteen years old, and this was my voice. Are you serious? Dead serious. Lord have mercy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jay Henry. And, you know, if I go over to Flyers, there's the flyer on the screen. We're about to talk about this event, April 5th, oh, yeah. 8 p.m., all right, inside the Atrium Atlanta, a tribute. And I'm going to shut up and let Jay Henry do the talking. Tell us about this awesome event that's coming up, Jay. Well, I wanted to... Um do this the right way i wanted to uh make the tribute of all tributes mm -hmm. you, know, you have four legendary voices luther vandross barry white teddy pendergrass donny hathaway four voices and styles that people love and i always thought imagine if you can get all four of them together one night what kind of concert that mm -hmm. i'm telling you with a full band 11-piece band. Oh, that's what we're oh, in yeah. for? Oh, that's what you're in for. Oh, my Horn goodness. section, background vocalist, rhythm section, percussionist. And oh. I have three of my good friends coming to town. Danny Clay, who was discovered by Steve Harvey, um, singing Luther Vandross. And if you close your eyes, you'll think you're listening to him. And Jamar Dukes, who's the nephew of Glenn Joe. He'll be doing Donny Hathaway. And then you also have Andre Jackson. Yeah. Teddy Pendergrass reincarnated. Oh, wow. If, yes. If you uh, had a chance to hear my new single with Andre Jackson and Danny Clay on it, you understand what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But those three performers are uh, three people I've had the opportunity to work with individually. And I thought it would be a crazy idea to put all four of us together one night in one place and possibly take this on a road. And I do want to tell Atlanta and surrounding areas, if you're in town, and if you don't have anything planned next Friday, the atrium is where you need to be. I promise you, it'll be a night you won't forget. Right, and I'm um, trying to uh to get this on the screen as we talk about it so you can share the screen with us somewhere here. Let me see if it will fit right here. Yeah, there we go. So ladies right. and gentlemen, right between me and Jay Henry there is the flyer that we're talking about. And this is going on down there at the atrium. And a lot of us know about the atrium. It's very popular on Stone Mountain, on, Stone, on Memorial Drive. 5479 Memorial Drive and um, let's see it's April 5th and it's an early enough show too doors open at 7 30 p.m. Um, yes I gotta ask you Jay Henry yeah this you know what every time I listen to your ad and I see the flyer 
I feel very Las Vegas in, in my mind. I feel like this is like a Vegas show here, right here. Um, that's what we're trying to bring to Atlanta. Okay. And we're working on doing this monthly, so I'm going to do monthly tribute shows. Like in May, we're working on the emotions of the Jones girls. Oh. Yes. So we're, we're the, the whole thing is to bring that Vegas experience to Atlanta. And like I said, I want to do it right. Awesome, man. Man, I'm telling you, that voice right there, I, I, I thought <laughs> the man himself came on. Ladies and gentlemen, please get your tickets for this one. And I mean it when I say I'll see you there because this isn't going to miss Wayne Hall. And Jay, I got to tell you, man, I have quite a few individuals already expressed that. They got to be at this show. So we're excited oh, wow. and looking forward to it. How do we get tickets? Go to eventbrite.com. And you should just be able to type in uh, J. Henry or the J. Henry at the atrium to my knowledge. Um, go right there. and uh, Or you can call. I believe it's 404 uh, 939. One second, let me get that number for you. Sure. You, you go ahead and get it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is creating a buzz because of the different artists and how well they sound like them, how much they sound like them. I'm telling you, this one is going to be a very entertaining event. April 5th, that's during spring break for Gwinnett County Schools. So those of you who are hanging around or came back from spring break, make sure you go check out Jay Henry um, live at the atrium. You have that number ready? Almost. Okay. And so while he's... All right, here we go. Okay, good. 404-939-285. Four zero four. Four zero four. Uh, nine three nine. Nine two nine. Nine three nine. Yeah, nine three nine. Two eight four five. Two eight four five. All right, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Jay Henry is gonna be at the atrium in Atlanta. Is there? Is there uh, like websites, YouTube channels, or places we can go and see previous performances? Absolutely. Just type in J. Henry Live or J. Henry Barry White, and you can see uh, previews of me on the sax as well as singing. Guys, go check it out. Go to YouTube, look up J. Henry Live or J. Henry Barry White, and check yes. out this amazing, amazing um, performer and how much he'll bring you back into those days when you were just all up in your different artists. But what I like is the package. You know, it would oh, be yeah. good enough for one doing a show, but man, Luther Vandross, Teddy P, man, I can't wait to hear somebody say, turn it off. <laughs> oh, man, let me tell you something. Man. <laughs> we did a show in DC, Andre and I, yeah. at the Carlisle Room. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you, it was bananas. He's such an energetic um, performer, such as myself. So the two of us together with that energy, that presence that Barry and Teddy had. Yes. And Danny Clay and I, Danny Clay and I did a uh, show in Sacramento together. And I kid you not, they literally had to call the ambulance to come resuscitate this lady. Oh, wow. I kid you not. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was that crazy. I can just And imagine. Jamal Dukes, I mean, what can I say? That's just a singing fool. <laughs> um, but what do you expect from other, you, you, do you expect anything other from Glenn Jones, nephew? I know. Right. Gotta be just a, I love that singing fool. Oh uh, yeah. Oh gosh, ladies oh, and gentlemen. Band. What 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 more can I say about my band? Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, tell Revolutionary is the name of my band, and when I tell you, they uh, they they, they gonna bring it. And like I said, um, I went with my full band because those artists had full bands, and when you went to those shows, you got the ex you got the full experience. It wasn't a track thing. It wasn't a trio trying to uh, fill out a whole band sound. You know, and yeah. I said, if I did this, I want to do it right because I want to make a statement and I want to make an impact. Listen. So we're going to have some fun. 
listen, it's gonna be ecstasy. Gonna be ecstasy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Jay Henry. Anything else before we wrap up, Jay? Um, I just want to see you there, Atlanta. Atlanta, you are in for a treat, I promise you. I promise you, you will not forget that night. It's going to rekindle some flames or create new flames. But it's going to be a great night. You're going to have some great music, great food and just an overall great experience. And I can't wait to meet you and shake your hand as well as entertain you. I know, likewise, likewise. I, I gotta, gotta come out early so I can get to do all that, Jay. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. Atrium, here we come. I, I can't tell you the, it, it, you know, I promote a lot of events, but this one got my attention and I'm gonna be there. Like some of the folks are telling me in the chat. Yep. Beto wants to know the date. It's April 5 at 8 p.m. in the atrium, Beto. And uh, Janice says that voice will definitely, definitely pull folks to the atrium. He claimed the sound at 8, but got it at 14. That's amazing. Andrea, we're going. <laughs> I love well, it. If they call that number, I'll be answering the phone. And if you call that number, you're going to hear Hello. <laughs> Call the number, ladies, so you can get that early taste. Jerry here. <laughs> You're so good. In my share of lovers, some of them were damn good. <laughs> hey! All right. You all know the rest. Let's oh, go yeah. to the atrium to get the full performance. Man, oh, Jay, right. we're excited. We're excited. So am I. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you there for sure, man. All right. All right, my brother. You take care. Thank you. you as well. We'll Thank be in you. touch. Thank you. All in right. Atlanta, I look forward to seeing you next Friday night. Awesome. Right. That's right. That's right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, there we have it. Mr. J. Henry. Great conversation on his upcoming Likewise. live, J. Henry Live at the Atrium. Okay, Natalie Skyboy. Let's well you said wow, you're not wow yet, girl. Wait till next Friday night in the atrium. Are you right. coming, Natalie? Yes. Make sure to come out. All right. And be sure to follow me on social media at J Henry Live. The letter J Henry Live. That's Facebook and Instagram. Thank you. J Henry Live. J Henry Live. Follow him, ladies. <laughs> and guys, yeah. Married right. right. finds our male at female. Follow him. All right. Thank you, Jay Henry. Thank you. All right. You have a good night. Good night. All right. Hey there, Atlanta. This is your main man, Jay Henry, live. And I want to invite you to come hang out with me and a couple of my friends, Andre Jackson, Danny Clay, and Jamal Dukes, as we pay tribute to the iconic voices, Barry White, Teddy Pendergrass, Luther Vandross, and Donnie Hathaway. Live Friday, April 5th at the Atrium in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Details are on the flyer. Tickets are available now. I want to see your face in the place. Yeah, baby. It's gonna be ecstasy, yes. All right, y'all. I'll see you later. All right, that's Jay Henry there. Make sure you go to the atrium next week, Friday. Barry White, even the man sounds just like Barry White, along with Teddy Pendergast, Donna, Donny Hathaway, huh? Luther Vandross. I'm not missing that one, sorry. You know where to find me next week, Friday night, 8 o'clock, at the atrium, Jay Henry Live. Ladies and gentlemen, it's 9.02 p.m., and we're going to have our annual salute to women edition for 2024 we are being graced by four awesome women three special guests that will be um cheered will be um what's the word jack hill used she was happy to be the chairperson um moderator there we go and um they're going to be 
highlighting this year's Women's International theme. Before I go over to them, one of our sponsors is Patsy Gatson, running for DA in Gwinnett County, and she's a sponsor of this evening's conversation. Here's her ad. Join us in celebrating Women's History Month by re-electing Patsy Austin Gatson, Gwinnett's first female district attorney. Under her leadership, the inaugural DA Citizen Academy was launched alongside groundbreaking programs designed to protect our youth and guide them towards positive futures. Support progress. Re-elect Patsy Austin Gatson for DA, a pioneer for justice and a champion for our children. Let's keep making history together. That's right. And ladies and gentlemen, I do appreciate Miss Patsy for being a sponsor tonight. And if you're in Gwinnett County, please, by all means, re-elect Patsy, right? Okay, so having said that, let me scroll on down to Zoom land. All right. Um, let me uh, go over to Zoom. There we go. And my guests are there. And I've got to tell you, they were on time. <laughs> Ladies, good evening and welcome to the Wayne All Show. Yeah, that was my nice little way of making sure you all can hear me. All right. <laughs> and I can hear you. Okay, I'm going to tell you what the tonight. So, Jekyll is our host, our moderator. And so, I'm going to turn it over to Jekyll. And she's going to get into an introduction, your um, bio, etc. But then, ladies, as you talk, based on the perspective of your journey, real quick, let's say you were a politician and you've seen some of the lack of inclusion. Don't rock your head, politician. Or if you were <laughs> in another form of business, but as you, as you evolved into who you are now, you have come across what our theme is about this year the presence or lack of inclusion for women. Just that's how we're going to segue into this conversation tonight. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I'm turning it over. I'm going to try and make myself disappear off the audience screen. Let's screen there. I pulled that off. And now it's going to be Jekyll um, taking over. Thank you so much. platform and giving us this opportunity to have what I know is going to be an amazing conversation this evening. And so I'm actually going to dive right in because this is, as Wayne uh, said, International Women's Month. We've had International Women's Day and the theme is inspiring inclusion. And so that is going to be the focus of our conversation and with our esteemed Ladies and gentlemen, can I did I say that esteemed panel of amazing ladies? And so, ladies, I want to welcome you all tonight and thank you for the opportunity to share with us um, our first guest. And I do have a bio I'm going to read, but let me just do a little quick intro and then I'll share a little bit more about our amazing guests. So first we have the Honorable Donna McLeod, who's a former member of the Georgia House of Representatives. Yay, let's everybody give her a clap. <laughs> and then we have Miss Winnie Stark, American Family Insurance Agent. Welcome, Winnie. Thank you. And then we have Miss Samantha Samuels, co-chair for the City of Stockbridge Development Authority. Ladies, welcome. Yeah. Thank and you. Thank and you. when I say that you're all powerhouses in your own right, I sincerely mean that and just shattering the glass ceiling in your own area, in your own field. And so I'm going to share a little bit about that tonight. And I'm going to start with you, Miss McLeod. And the reason why I'm starting with you is you recently celebrated your birthday. So we're going to just celebrate that right now because, you know, for all your accomplishments, you get to celebrate your birthday till March 31st. How about that? <laughs> and I'm doing it. <laughs> You're doing it. And so I just want to share a little snippet about you for our audience. And I know a lot of them do know of you. They've followed your uh, really amazing career, but you're from Jamaica, you know? And so I just want to make that known that we are claiming you 
<laughs> front, left, right, and center. And so I do have a bio here. So I'll just share a little bit of that. You were actually born in Kingston and yes. then you moved to Canada because I think some people think that you uh, came directly here to the US, right? So you came here um, from Canada, you moved to Georgia in 1998 and became a US citizen in 2012. And then going from that to the House of Representative. But before we get there, I just want you all to know who this lady is. She earned a bachelor degree in chemical engineering. How many, how many people do you know who's earned that? You know, like you're the only one I know. So right away, and so you're a chemical engineer with over 30 years of experience in quality assurance management engineering, and you're now the president and CEO, I'll try to say this right, of Envi EnviroClaw, LLC, okay, a quality insurance regulatory consulting company specializing in medical devices, food, plastic, and pharmaceuticals. So you first ran to represent District 105 uh, in the Georgia House of Representatives in 2016, and then um, you served 2019 to 23 as uh, the member of the House of Representatives from the 105th District. And I've got to say, you're a first, and we're so proud of this first, the first Jamaican American and to become a representative in Georgia. And ladies, we just got to stop there and give that hand. <laughs> so just um, so incredible. You are also the uh, co-founder of CANI. It's Community Action Network Initiatives. It's a nonprofit, a 501c3 organization that helps educate and inform people of their civic and societal rights and responsibilities. Yes. So powerhouse did i say that so welcome welcome so happy to have you here all right so Thank next you. we have miss winnie stark so i'm going to share just a little bit about you um you are also from jamaica and so you um you're a native of Manchester and you graduated from Homo Technical High School and then you migrated to the U.S. in 1978 earned a bachelor's degree in business. Now fast forward today you are as I shared you are um, an American family insurance agent and you've been at the company for 12 years and you are no stranger to the insurance industry because you started your career in Florida at Allstate right in 19 oh, what's that 1990 so you go way back right you know your stuff and you also served as a district sales manager for the East Fort Lauderdale market after seven successful years you moved to Orlando to pursue other opportunities and you serve as vice president for the Orlando Urban League um, you later started your own interior decorating business, and we get to enjoy your great taste on social media. So thank you. And you enjoyed beautifying homes and businesses for over 15 years, and you were featured in local magazines. That's how good your work is. All right. And then you moved to Georgia in 2019, and you reinvented yourself, and that's when you entered the insurance industry. And so you were appointed by State Farm as an agent, but you chose to work with American Family Insurance as an agency owner. And so let me just share some of your successes right here because there are so many. I'll just give a few. So in 2022, Winnie received the Distinguished Award of 10-time Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame, an award only earned by a few company-wide. So your passion for, tech, for protecting families with life insurance brings you great satisfaction. And then you also achieve gold key status, commercial business insurance, nine of 12, 12 years. You were also awarded American star status in customer excellence. You also won agents of the month on the state and district level several times. And in 2020, you were featured on the cover of the All-American Magazine, the American Family Insurance Company. An honor you shared with your team because you're a team player. And oh. ladies and gentlemen, look at oh. what I have. <laughs> I was gifted my very own copy. Thank you so much. Thank you. So welcome. So excited to have you here. All right. So next we have Miss Samantha Samuels. 
And I'm just going to take a little breath because I said to myself, you know what? I should have worked out to read these bios because they're just so awesome. And it's like running a marathon because your ladies are so accomplished. So Miss Samantha Samuels is a coacher for the City of Stockbridge Development Authority. And uh, Samantha is a dedicated professional with a strong background in organizational leadership. You graduated from Mercer University with an undergraduate degree in this field, all right? And then you've got such a great passion for mental health advocacy. Your passion is evident through your active involvement in various professional platforms. You've contributed your expertise to the National Federation for Families with Children's Mental Health, um, indicating your commitment to supporting families dealing with mental health challenges. And that is so crucial right now because not just our country, but all over the world, we've seen a rise in, in this is kind of its own pandemic. So we are just so appreciative of your passion in that area. You have extended your influence as a personal development coach and international speaker, align yourself with the prestigious John Maxwell and Valerie Burton program. And that in itself is an incredible accomplishment. Um, you empower young people at Young Dreamers International. So at the helm of Young Dreamers International, you hold the position of CEO, and this role underscores your leadership abilities and showcases your commitment to empowering and inspiring young individuals to pursue their dreams. So just a few more things about you, right? You're the former president of the Caribbean Association of Georgia, and um, your role as a nonprofit leader beyond this role, you are such a versa versatile individual because you're an author, you're a speaker, and you're a minister. And your personal journey of self-discovery and authenticity is encapsulated in your powerful motto, be honest with yourself, the person in the mirror. And if we start there, that will do amazing things for our mental health, would it not? All right, so ladies, Samantha, welcome. All right, so we're actually going to dive right in into our conversation. And ladies, I know I shared some things about you. However, um, during this conversation, I'd like you to also enlighten the audience <laughs> of any key things that, additional things that they need to know about you and what's happening right now for you. All right, so we have some questions, and so we're gonna um, dive into that. And Mr. Wayne Hall had mentioned our sponsors earlier, so we definitely wanna thank our sponsors again for this evening. And so I'm gonna dive into our very first question. And each of you just take five minutes to share your answers with me. There are a couple of questions all rolled up in one, and so I'll just repeat it for each of you. But I will go ahead and extend and, and start off with um, our representative, Donna McLeod. And this is the question, right? Uh, please, you know, you can share a little bit more about yourself, should you wish to do that. But then share how you, you assess the inclusion or lack thereof of women in every facet of life based on your experience. What stands out to you? Who stands out to you? And in what era would you say women are the least included? So I know that's quite a lot. So I'll just, I'll just, I'll share it again, and then you can um, dive right in. So, how would you assess the inclusion or lack of inclusion of women in every facet of your life, based on your experience? Facet of life based on your experience. What stands out to you? Who stands out to you? And in what area would you say women are least included? So let me start. Um, so back in the day, I, I you, you mentioned I was an engineer. And um, back in the 80s, um, I had, there was a class of 132 people that started the engineering program, and only 32 of us graduated. Um, so women in engineering is, on, is one of those things that I think um, we're still not seeing the kind of um, presence um, for a lot of women, they they seem to be afraid of math. And I, math is your friend. Trust me, math is your friend. <laughs> um, but I think it's I think for me as um, as as the years have gone by, 
and I, and I, I was a single mom at the time too. So not only am I in a, in a field that I'm, there's not a lot of women, then you're dealing with the fact that you are a woman because as a mom and a young mom, I had daycare issues. I had a sick child and back, uh, ladies, if some of the ladies know um, today, they are so much more stuff offered to women in the workforce with children. Back then there wasn't. Um, so when your kid was sick, you know, you were really harassed about coming to work and, and your child is sick and, you know, you can't bring them to daycare. Um, so it was, it was definitely challenging. So I, I definitely think that the feel of science is still needs a lot of women. The diversity, having diversity at the table in, in all aspects of um, our work life is important and women provide that especially black women providing that because of our the challenge that we have to face i remember even back then um just our hair texture was an issue i remember you you never go on a job interview without pulling your hair back and wearing a small earring even though i was always loud and proud i couldn't do it as you can see i am loud and i'm proud about wearing my big earrings and my colors um and back then you know we we're very very conscious about it so even women in that time being yourself being being able to you know maneuver in spaces that you were most of the time excluded was uh, was very difficult and um for me um as the years went by it it i, I will say that i was a trail breaker and a lot of things even getting into into management um you know, there was a lot of women in management and I actually became a management in, in corporate America uh, for several years um, and had people reporting directly to me. In fact, just just the fact of being a woman and at the time when I became a, a supervisor, I was actually had 14 men reporting directly to me. And so that was a challenge in itself because, um, you know, again, men have an opinion of women um, as to where their place is. And um, my place is wherever the heck I want to be. That's my place. Um, and I've always made that clear. Um, but I, 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 again, and uh, for me, um, I need the other part of the question. And yeah. in politics, in politics, women make up 50 something percent of the population, yet we're not seeing, we're not, that a number is not uh represented in elected office either uh and you know I, I remember one guy in the georgia house uh referring to me as girl and i had to shut him down and say uh-uh you will either call me miss mcleod you can call me representative mcleod you can call me the gentle lady but you will not call me girl because i'm not your girl i was elected duly elected as you were so th even in those spaces as a woman um sometimes people want to put you in certain you know I'm duly elected. I am not the people spoke and as they spoke for you, they spoke for me and I'm equally here with you sitting in this Georgia chamber. So um, those, th those spaces still exist. And this is 2020, this is an like, this is 2020 when this happened, I think 2019. So, you know, so again, um, those spaces and um, I wanted to, you to give me the other who, I think it was who, Yes, and, and who stands out to you? And I, I've got to say, even when you break those barriers and now you're operating in that space, it's still a continuation of that. Mm -hmm. It never stops. So that's that's interesting. Now, who stands out to you? And, and in what era would you say women are the least included? So who stands out to me? I have to say Marama, my great, my grandmother, um, who was not, could not read and write. Um, but she was able to make sure my dad got a trade in, in the back site in Jamaica um, so that he could travel to Canada and he could, uh, you know, create a life for us as kids and send us send for us from Jamaica to Canada. Um, but I would say Matamak for someone who could not read and write, she was a power beyond power measure. Um, this is a woman that was a higgler. She sold in the market um, and was able to buy her, her own house in the late 60s in Tivoli Gardens. So this is this is somebody who I admire greatly because she was never one to be put in a corner. Um, she was the Medea before Medea was. She had a cigarette in her mouth and had all kinds of crust work coming out of her mouth. But when I tell you um, hard working and could cook, that, that, that is Mother Mock. And um, our whole 
family are made. Even my mom, who is her, would be her daughter-in-law, thinks that Madame Mac was the most, one of the most extraordinary human being we have ever met in our life. And I'm truly, truly grateful. She was a Maroon. She, her family, she was never enslaved. Her mentality was that mentality too. Um, she certainly was emancipated long time before anyone else. And so for that reason, I am totally in, in, in awe and in honor of her. Um, the spaces that I think women still, there's still a lot of spaces in, in politics. And in, uh, in, we're doing a little bit better in business, but depend on business. There's certain businesses that were much more um, accepted, but I think women can do almost any business they want to do. Um, you know, back in the day when it was more custom for a woman to be a teacher. And now, you know, we have uh, branched out to being head of corporations and we bring a lot to the table. So um, as far as spaces, I think science, uh, because those are the two areas that I'm most familiar, I think science, we're still lacking in, in science field. And we're also lacking in the political process and governance, right? So I try to make sure I explain to people there's a difference between um, politics and governance. And the politics is the, is the part in which you basically persuade somebody to come and vote for you or support you. But then there's the part of governance and how we use your money. And that's why it's so women have uh, run households, we run things, and we're so good at budgeting. So I think that our place in that, in that space should improve and we would get, we'd see a lot. Cause I am running to be the chairwoman for Gwinnett County. And that is that, that kind of role. It's a CEO, it's about managing budget and the tax dollars that people pay. So pay every day when they, they pay taxes. And that is the, the purpose of governance is to use those money on behalf of the people to give them services that they need. And, you know, I love the visibility that you have because as other women are seeing you, you know, you know, shatter the stereotypes of who women should be. It started, of course, with your grandmother, right? It, she didn't let society define her. It's like, this is who I am and I'm going to go after this. And that was, you know, that, that's her legacy to you. And now you're Absolutely. passing it on. And all these women are hearing this tonight. There's such a strength about it. And it has to, you know, and about you, and it has to start from the inside out. And to know, yes, we these are these are the, the the characters that we've developed, you know, through our grandparents, through our parents, and we could be anything we want to be, you know, wherever Absolutely. God says we need to be, we could be Absolutely. that. And Absolutely. so when they see you doing it, and we're not just saying it, but they see you do it, it's like I could do it too. Imagine the young girls looking at you. So let and, and I know that we need to go on, but one of the things I will say, even being elected to the Georgia House. I did not know I made history until afterwards. And somebody called me and said, because I was told just to flip the seat, I would have been the first African-American to serve in that seat as well. And when they called me and said, you know, you're the first Jamaican born to serve. And I, one thing I want to say about history, history is not made by people who go out to seek history. It's made because you were you did the right thing at the right time or you stood up for something that you believed in. And that's how you make history. And that's the only kind of history that really truly matters. Amen. Incredible. All right, so we're gonna move to to you, Samantha. Samantha, what what would let me just repeat the question? It's um, sh how um, share how you assess the inclusion or lack of in uh, or lack of inclusion of, of women in every facet of life based on your experience. What stands out to you? Who stands out to you? And in what era would you say women are the least included? Hmm. Okay. Um, thank you so much, both um, Jaquel and Wayne I, and everyone else. I thank you. Um, you know, I think she does know, Donna know that she's like my shero. I remember the first time I heard her, I was like, who is this woman? I love her tenacity. I love the energy. I just love everything about what she does. Um, going out there and just, you know, just breaking every ceiling and then you put her music on and then she just busts out. <laughs> <laughs> and she just busts out you're like wait a minute <laughs> i thought she was a representative she's just like listen you got you know i remember when we went into the uh at the state capitol she said well go on i was like yes <laughs> <laughs> um so to answer your question um first i'm from guyana i know i didn't put that in my bio i'm from guyana <laughs> south america not ghana i have to always say that to people um but you know, when I think of this, I think of the women who gave it up 
for children. Like I was a mom that gave up my career to raise my children, to become the PTO president and to do all the things PTO just to be around and have the schedule around my children. And so even though you read this entire bio, it's like, who is that person? Because when you, you pull away from the corporate world and you say, I want to raise my children, no one recognizes you. No one acknowledges the job that you do. <laughs> And so women who are making decisions to just step away and say the most valuable individual is, is the kids and I want to make that investment. And the problem is, is that when they aim to try to push themselves back out into the atmosphere, out into that workforce, they're like, well, what type of experience do you have? <laughs> they almost exclude that yeah you were the taxi driver you were the doctor you were the the chef you were everything you know you showed up and even the women who are working but whenever the child is sick who do they call the mom and you know donna rightfully said about being a single mom i mean i'm a you know i'm married and i just can't it was hard being married and still and having three kids much less to be a single mom and so when i think of inclusion i think of those women the women that are in the home, that's making a difference, that made this a choice to make a sacrifice, but then someone else doesn't give her the opportunity when she's ready to say, well, I'm ready to get back out in the workforce. And they're like, well, let me see your resume. Oh, you're not qualified. And so you then you put a damper and she's like, well, wait a minute, I've raised successful children. I've done everything. But then the world tells you, oh, well, you don't matter because you're a mother. You don't matter because you you made that choice, and so you you so women in the home are put in this position to make some tough decisions, and that for me it's one of the um, the lack of inclusion is that when can we give you know, good lord we wear so many hats now, yet still we have to come home and cook and clean and do all of this stuff, and so the women in the home. The domestic work needs to, it needs to change. There should be no, well, men do this and women do that. There is no such thing. If you're better at cooking, then you cook. I don't remember the last time I've done laundry. <laughs> My husband does it. That when he leaves to go away, we're like, well, who's going to do the laundry? <laughs> I remember my kids like, mom, who's doing the laundry? I said, I don't know. Your dad went away. <laughs> <laughs> your dad is out of town i don't know who's going to do the laundry there should be no such thing as a gender role no longer there should be we all put our hands together to get it done when i think of what stands out that you know the women and then who stands out as donna my grandmother is my paternal grandmother she's gone but she is the one that said don't worry my child don't worry, Pitney. You come. It's okay. I have to get into my Caribbean um, because she gave me hope and she gave me a voice and she gave me a chance at life when no one else did. And so to my grandmother, Elaine Skeet, that is the woman that I honor. I cherish her. I cherish her getting up, you know, at the nick of dawn, making sure that we were fed. Children, grandchildren, everybody made sure Sunday morning we were at Sunday school. And if we dare, my cousin and I laugh at it to this day, we dare try to say, oh, we're going to just go for 15 minutes. And she said, OK, then you're going to go to big people church. <laughs> <laughs> we know what that means. <laughs> yes, you're going to go to big people church, you know. But that is the woman who made an impact in my life to this day. She is the one that allowed me to stand tall on her shoulder. It's her. So when I think of the question, the women in the home, the women that gave up their careers to say, I want to raise my children, because at the ending of the day, who will do it? Someone needs to put food on the table. And if they made a choice for a period of time, to raise those children, the world should accept and appreciate them for that. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And 
the you know just hearing from you and also from Donna and about our grandmothers you know including my grandmother we are becoming our grandmothers for the next generation <laughs> and so that is just hope in itself you use that word and when you use it again there is hope and things are they're changing they're not changing fast enough as we'd like but they're changing because of women like all of you like all of us all right and in what era would you say women are the least included um you know i thought of with donna and i was like wow an engineer that was never even heard of back in the day, really and truly, especially growing up in the Caribbean, you only knew of, you either be a nurse or a teacher. <laughs> Those were the top careers. You had no other choice. There was nothing else for you or a domestic worker. But nurse, if you were a nurse or a teacher, you were it. And now we have where girls can just step out and become all that they can become. But there's still such a great need, like you said, in engineering, politics. You know, and one of the things that I believe is that, like, when Donna is the first, Honorable Representative Donna is the first, but then, okay, how can I pull someone along? And mm -hmm. I think we should always be in a place where we're in the middle, where we're gleaning from someone who came before us, and then we're pulling someone up from the bottom. And we're saying, hey, come along. I was the first, but I don't want to be the first. I don't want to be just here because I, it's, it's, it's lonely in this space if I'm just the only person here. Let me bring someone else because then you have more voice at the table. Yeah, exactly. And then just encouraging the next generation that it's okay to be first. Mm -hmm. And you're their mentor and guide because you've been there, you know what it, it looks like, but to encourage them because some of them are going down unconventional paths, but it doesn't mean that you know, they're not gonna be successful. They need women like us to motivate, inspire them and say, yes, that's the way to go. So I'm, I'm just excited to hear um, what Winnie has to say <laughs> about this topic. Winnie, um, uh, share how you assess the inclusion or lack of inclusion of women in every facet of life based on your experience. Who stands out to you and, and uh, what era would you say women are the least included? Thank you. And thank you, uh, Mr. Hall, for reaching out and inviting me to be a part of this panel. Jaquel, thank you for being our awesome moderator. Um, you are a force to be reckoned with. And one day we'll turn the uh, tables on you. <laughs> um, one correction is um, I've been in Georgia since 2009, just so the numbers will um, match up. Um, like Donna, I have a birthday this month, and we're going to ride it to the end. <laughs> yeah, I'm right there with you. Um, as previously stated, I am a veteran in the uh, insurance industry. I've been employed in this industry since 1990, which is approximately 35 years. Yeah, I'm dating myself. Um, I currently have two locations in the Atlanta area, uh, one in Stone Mountain and one in Houston. I have been with American Family Insurance since 2012. And I plan to ride this wave until the wheels fall off. <laughs> um, insurance is predominant, predominantly a male dominated industry. I started out in this industry out of pure happenstance. And I had no idea what the heck I was getting myself into. And lo and behold, here I am at the table with mostly men and a couple of white females and the only black female. At the tender age of 31, I thought I knew it all and had all the answers. And with my fresh diploma, um, it stated I was qualified and ready to rapidly climb that corporate ladder. I am MBA qualified with a cherry on top. Well, I was in for a rude awakening when 85% 85 85 of the agents who I uh, who reported to me were white males with over 50 who were over 50 with probably about 20 25 years in the industry 
they ate my liver for supper. And then they got my kidneys and every other body part they could get their hands on. To make matters worse, my manager was a black male who was an ex-veteran. He was not a happy man, and his mission was to make everyone's life miserable by torturing us. And that's a true story. Long story short, inclusion was not the order of the day, and young black females were not an item on the menu. My strategy was to align myself with a handful of agents who understood my plight and worked like a slave to prove myself to these agents and the company. It was by far one of the hardest things I've ever had to endure in my life. Mm -hmm. Women are in the minority in certain fields like insurance. There are not a lot of us, especially at the top. Aviation, aircraft pilots and flight engineers, architecture, engineering, uh, sorry, mechanical engineering, and just to name a few. Of course, some of the professions that require major physical strength do not tend to attract females. And what stands out, who stands out to me? Uh, the first person that came to mind is Michelle Obama. Um, I have a lot of respect for her. Um, she has proven to be a true leader and a woman of substance. Another person that comes to mind is our very own Judge Joel Scott. And I've been acquainted with Judge Scott since we were children. We went to the same youth fellowship group together. And I've watched her matriculated through the ranks to the status of judgeship. That's major. So I salute you, Judge Scott. And last but not least, my deceased mother, Miriam Reed from whence I came. She showed me how to be strong. She showed me how to be resilient. She taught me what kindness was, and most importantly, how to be a godly person. Wow, that was amazing, and I love Ladies, how we're paying tribute to those who have gone before us and shaped us. So, man, I'm, I'm just so amazed. And I, I love that we've tonight, for everyone listening, have identified the areas of opportunity for women, okay? And to know that, yes, women are excelling in these areas and so can you. And there are also mentors that are available to help to push you to carry you along. And I think what's really key is for us to start with the younger generation, much younger, you know, even before high school to instill this in them so they can start forging their own path and making the right decisions. So, all right, so that was our first question. And I, I figured that would be like the most intense. <laughs> so I know we're gonna uh, keep moving it along, but right now we're gonna uh, take a commercial break and then we're gonna come back to our next segment. Um, and then we're just gonna keep diving in into some really good conversation. Join us in celebrating Women's History Month by re-electing Patsy Austin Gatson, Gwinnett's first female district attorney. Under her leadership, the inaugural DA Citizen Academy was launched alongside groundbreaking programs designed to protect our youth and guide them towards positive futures. Support progress. Re-elect Patsy Austin Gatson for DA a pioneer for justice and a champion for our children. Let's keep making history together. All right, awesome. All right, welcome back to uh, everyone who's tuning in and thank you ladies for a uh, first grade session. And let's dive into um, the second half. So according to one theory, one of the major causes of gender inequality is the lack of awareness among women 
about their rights and their ability to achieve equality. This lack of awareness is often due to the prevailing culture and social norms, which dictate that women should be subservient to men. Are you in agreement and why or why not? And before you each answer that question, I'm just going to just remind our viewers who were with this evening. We're with the Honorable Donna McLeod, we're with Miss Winnie Stark, and we're with Miss Samantha Samuels, all powerhouses in their own right. And so here is the pressing question of the day. This lack of awareness is often due to the prevailing culture and social norms, which dictate that women should be subservient to men. Are you in agreement? And why? Why not? All right, so we're going to get started. Let's go first with you, Winnie. <laughs> we're going to start with you. Um, I'm definitely not in agreement. Uh, today's woman knows better and are fully equipped, educated, and trained to handle pretty much any job a man can do, as long as she's physically able to. In this country, thank God, we are more socially advanced in recognizing that women are brilliant creatures and gender-specific roles are a thing of the past. Today's woman is more prepared than ever before to step up and manage large corporations, small corporations, medical practices, major construction projects, just like we have one um, bidding, uh, budding in Jamaica with three women at the helm, just to name a few. In many cases, we come to the table better prepared than our average male because we know the bar is so much higher for us. In order for us to stand shoulder to shoulder to a man, we come prepared and being subservient is not a part of our vocabulary. Thank you. You, you said something that's, <laughs> I love that. You said something that is so key about women being prepared. We're actually a lot more prepared and we take and we spend the time. But one of the things that works against us and as far as awareness is that we don't feel prepared. We don't feel prepared. And so we take a lot more time trying to get more and more prepared when we are ready. Ladies, we are ready. You know, we've said this before, a guy will just step into it and let me just learn as I'm going. And I think our confidence comes a lot from knowing and being ready. And so when we feel like we're not 100% there, we don't step forth into these opportunities as often as we should. And that's why it's key to have really great men mentors to say, come on now, you're ready, let's go, let's do it. All right, so I love that. So let's go to um, you, Representative McLeod. What, what say you about this? Are you in agreement? Why or why not? The lack of awareness is often due to the prevailing culture and social norms, which dictate that women should be subservient to men. Um, so again, um, women being subservient, uh, this, uh, I think this has a lot to do with culture. <laughs> Just tame the answer, tame the answer. Uh, wait, okay. <laughs> no, don't go off on the people. <laughs> okay. So, so let me, let me, let me tame the answer and, and be professional. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let me say this, let me start by saying a lot of it is cultural too, because uh, when I grew up um, uh, in my house, in my family, women were in lead roles. I don't know. Uh, they were always leaders in my family. The women in my family have always been, even if they were the ones cooking at home, they were leading. They were the ones making the decision, the financial decisions. They were the ones, you know, wh what needs to be by for the house. Okay, let me speak in, in proper English. They were the <laughs> ones determining how, what is bought for the house. They're the ones that were, you know, um, basically making sure that the household was right, even if they were doing that. So they were already, they were always the ones in control. So I don't know, um, subservient, um, yeah, that, that's not part of my vocabulary. And you know what, 
Yeah. We need more women like you who do yeah, believe that. that. <laughs> Even yeah, and, and once again, I, I'm, also. Per, I'm, perf- I'm, and I'm perfectly comfortable with being a woman. I'm perfectly comfortable. I love being a woman. There is nothing about women that I don't love. It has got nothing to do with that. But when you come to me as a human being, you're going to come to me correct. And you're going to come with to me with respect. And I can deliver because I've done so. And I'm not asking you, I'm not asking you for your approval. And you're not going to tell me how and what I cannot, cannot do. I am a woman who knows who she is. And I'm very comfortable in my skin. And any role that I decide to do, it'll be my choice. And I love that. And I love that you take a stand. And I think for women, and you mentioned something when someone said to you, girl, we have to stop and say, oh, no, because that's coming from a place of, you know, what culture dictates, you know? Yes. And so we have to make, stop and make the correction and don't say, oh, let me just ignore that. And, and, as, and as a cultural, as a, a Jamaican background, women have always been strong. It's not like, okay, they're talking about two income family. Well, shoot. Like I said, my grandmother was making it, bringing on the bacon, doing all of that stuff and doing it long time. My grandmother was born in 1908. Okay, so I, I, I don't, I'm not. I, again, I'm, I'm. I, so there are cultures that want to put women behind, um, and I, I'm, I believe in the culture that respects everybody and their uniqueness. And if you can't respect somebody's uniqueness, understand this that nobody has to put up with your, what you believe and what you're, what you believe is crap. Because at the end of the day, I'm going to have to walk in my own space and I have to determine how I live. And I don't need someone to tell me how to live. I am going to determine that on my own because, and, and that's why I say, you know, not that I don't care what other people think, but you have any, if you ain't feeding me, you ain't putting a roof on my head, I don't care. You don't tell me what to do. And again, out of respect as a human being, you respect people for who they are and meet them where they're at. Now, where you want them to be or what you think of them. And so again, yeah, uh, that the word certain has never been a part of my collective <laughs> consciousness. So I don't quite know how to, to respond to that because it's never been a part. I remember a um, long time ago, uh, Oprah Winfrey, um, Betty Shabash, uh, Malcolm X's wife was on an interview with Oprah and Oprah asked her, um, what do you say to people who said your husband was violent and stuff? And Betty Shabazz said, those people are not a part of my collective consciousness. <laughs> and that's my answer to that. You're not a part of my collective <laughs> consciousness. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're all going to take that, but I, I love respect them for who they are and meet people where they're at. So that's one of the biggest takeaways. So, all right, what say you, Miss Samuels? You know, I really do have to uh, agree with the representative, Donna. I have just, I might be small in stature, but I've just never been that one <laughs> that men could just say what they want to say. It's just never been that case. I've always, and it came from my dad teaching me from a little girl. Of, I remember, I think at the age of six or seven, and he would tell me about how men would aim to control women. And I don't know why he said that to me at that age. So I learned from them. I remember when I married my husband, he said, you know, you should have probably married your dad. <laughs> Cause I said, my daddy said, my daddy said, nope, we don't play pillow fight. My daddy said, <laughs> you know, so I was able to just stood my ground and not allow anyone especially, you know, men, no, you, and I really and truly have to agree with you, um, representative, no, you're going to respect me for who I am as a person. I bring something to the table and you bring something to the table and you're going to value me for who I am. There's an author that I love, Sheryl Sandberg, that's, the book is called Lean In. And I love that book because she tells you when you're in the room and you raise your hand, <laughs> I see Whitney, you're, you're like, yes. And you keep, you know, you raise your hand and of course they will pretend like they didn't see you. You know, you're in the boardroom and and I'm sure you probably could attest to this, uh, Miss Whitney. 
you raising, she said, keep it raised until they acknowledge you. You keep it raised until they acknowledge you. And so, but I want to share this story. I hosted a um, after school program just before COVID. I had pre- majority of boys and girls. We gave and some, you know, majority of them were boys, but they had a project and it was the girls against the boys. The boys literally just went and they were done. They didn't care how it looked. The girls were arguing who is going to lead and who is going to be in charge. And I think if anything, that is one of our thing that we have. The boys got it done. The girls were still trying to decide. Cheryl says, be done, not perfect. So we have to get to the point where get it done and learn from it and not try to fix the problem or, you know, trying to make sure it's all perfect. But when it comes to, what is that? Subserve, servient to me. Uh, we oh, won't no. use that word. We won't yeah, use that no. word. Yeah, that no, word. we're going to have to put that in the, uh, that needs to go <laughs> somewhere in the trash can or something like that. No, I've, I've just not ever been, you know, and, and some people be like, no, you're really reserved. I'm very reserved until, mm-hmm. <laughs> until. And I will leave it as that until. Yeah. And I, I think in, in cases and, you know, for our listeners, you know, there are a lot of men who make really great partners and they respect women. What we're talking about is in the society in as a whole and in, in certain cultures where women are not valued. And so this is where they find themselves being in this position. And we have to take a stand and say, yes, we, you know, we're, or no, we're not in agreement with that. We say yes to women being empowered. Yes to women being valued. Yes to women being and going after their dreams and know their worth and they've got the skills and the talents to perform just as well and in some cases even better. All right. And so we want to acknowledge that and that it's time for more change to happen, for us to not talk about it, but for us to actually see it. It's been the trickle effect, but ladies, I have a feeling, because there are women listening tonight, there are younger women listening, but really this, it's like catching fire and things are changing and it's gonna start picking up the pace. So awesome. So we're gonna take a commercial break And then we're gonna come back to our last question of the evening. And yes, we're gonna go out with a fire. (laughs) Join us in celebrating Women's History Month by re-electing Patsy Austin Gatson, Gwinnett's first female district attorney. Under her leadership, the inaugural DA Citizen Academy was launched alongside groundbreaking programs designed to protect our youth and guide them towards positive futures. Support progress. Re-elect Patsy Austin Gatson for DA, a pioneer for justice and a champion for our children. Let's keep making history together. Hey there, Atlanta, this is my man, J. Henry, live. And I want to invite you to come hang out with me and a couple of my friends, Andre Jackson, Danny Clay, and Jamal Dukes, as we pay tribute to the iconic voices Barry White, Teddy Pendergrass, Luther Vandross, and Donnie Hathaway. Live Friday, April 5th at the Atrium at Stone Mountain, Georgia. Details are on the flyer. Tickets are available now. I want to see your face in the place. Yeah, baby. It's gonna be ecstasy, yes. All right, y'all. I'll see you later. Okay, welcome back, everyone, to our final segment. This is Jaquel Tucker. I'm your host this evening, and I'm with our guests, the Honorable Donna McLeod, Miss Samantha Samuels, Miss Winnie Stark. And we're going to dive into this question because when I saw this number, I was like, whoa. So here's the question, right? The United Nations has assessed the cost for gender inequality. I don't know if anybody can take a wild guess at this number, but I'm going to say it. The cost is $360 billion, okay? This is not like from centuries ago up to now. This is annually. That is the cost 
of gender inequality. That's a lot of money. So with this knowledge and looking ahead, are you confident that this number can be reversed by 2030? And then what gives you the most hope right now that this can actually happen? So we'll get started with you, Ms. McLeod. <laughs> re repeat that question for me. Yeah, so the question is, um, basically, the, the backdrop is the United Nations, they have assessed the cost for gender inequalities, 360 billion annually, right? And with this knowledge looking ahead, are you confident that this number can be reversed by 2030? And if so, what gives you the hope that this can actually happen? Um, reverse, you know, they're trying to reverse us back. Um, because one of the, one of the things that have moved as women, far as the number, as far as the cost what it's costing us, how can that be reduced? That's what I'm saying. It, 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 it's going to be harder because every time you put more restriction on women, we, we end up actually being pushed back so that, so that loss is only going to probably grow because one of, one of, one of the things that made it possible for women to actually be in the workforce is having control of our own bodies, right? And um, pay equity. Um, even when we, we we were in the workforce doing the same work, because I have actually had that personally happen to me, where I trained someone uh, who was end up making more money than me. So the inequality of women and being underpaid, but not only that, not being able to be your own your full potential. So we already have doubts within ourselves because we don't we 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 analyze everything trying to 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 make sure that we get it right the first time. So we already do that to ourselves. But then then society is also saying, you know, I'm going to put these restrictions on you. Everything has a cost, right? Because if you think about if you think about making money, right? You think about what your contribution is, and you think about the workforce, right? When you go into a uh, in, into a corporation, you're actually helping that corporation make money, right? That's the whole idea. There's a structure, there's a hierarchy. And if, especially if you're in management, you're basically, your job is to produce and and um, the, the goals of the company, right? That's, that's your job. So as a woman, when you're not um, put into that um, space where you can really grow and really exercise your full earning potential, and even as moms, nobody pays moms. So, uh, you know, even that number, I, mean, I think it might be, it's too, it's too small. Um, because I, at the end of the day, I think we as women hurt ourselves in some ways, but then society also puts a pressure. So, and we're not just talking about North America, we're talking about women overall and um, being able to really experience our full potential. So no, I'm 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 right now. That's why I'm I'm here, pushing so hard to make sure that we're at the table. And I think Winnie said because if you're not at the table, you are certainly going to be on the menu. And the women have been on the menu a whole lot longer than most people. And and the fact that we have re we have our population our their number of women is con continues to to grow, and we're not getting the equality or the pay equality or the room to actually be our, our our full our full selves our full individuals so i i i will say to women and this is the word that i've i i i i've taken for the 2024 year is to be intentional be intentional because if we're not intentional those little girls behind us will not even have half of what we have can I just take you and multiply you like by a million more and kind of build that army? I mean, because I have hope that there are advocates like you are in this fight and will keep fighting and will keep making advances and keep being an example and keep, keep inspiring. So I know I'm hopeful, but yeah, that's a monumental number to get reversed. You know, it's going to take a very, very long time. We'll make strides, but it's not going to be overnight. Yeah. So um, let's go to you, um, Samantha. What do you say about that? Um, what gives you the most hope right now that this can actually happen? You know, maybe, maybe not. Can this, uh, can we see impactful change by 2030? 
not sure about 2030, but what gives me hope, and I'll get biblical a little bit here. There is this phenomenal Bible story that I love. When I came across it, I just loved it. It was these three, five daughters. Their dad died, and God told Moses to give the land to the men. And they and and they said, wait a minute, because my father didn't have boys, you're not going to give us land. So they approached Moses, and you think about this way back in the day, and said, are you saying because my dad didn't have boys that you're not going to give us what belongs to our dad? And so it, it the story ended up going that, that Moses went to God and God says, you do give them land and made it a law. I come to Wayne Hall and I want to say this. This is what gives us hope because we have to have men involved. We have to, men have to understand that they're, they have mothers, they have daughters, they have wives. Wayne is someone that I admire as a man. If he gets an award, he is not standing there by himself. His wife and his daughters are right there. And what he does, he gives them the honor and say, they're the one that's doing it for me to make me be on this platform. Whether it be that she made sure that his dinner is okay, whatever it is that she's doing or whatever the daughters are doing, he made, he made sure. So I think when it comes to what gives me hope, it's men like Wayne and those that have daughters that said, I want more for my daughter. I want to give my daughter a better education, a better world, because women, we cannot do it by ourselves. We do need those men that are going to stand at the table and they're going to say, no, she has a voice just like you. She deserves everything just like you and that is what gives me hope so wayne i salute you tonight <laughs> i do when i thought of that question i thought of you because i've you. never seen you on any platform receiving anything and you did not honor your wife and your daughters you have always made sure that they were the one that were getting the accolades and that's what we need and that's what gives me hope right now Thank awesome. You. Awesome. So we're going to take this time and just give a shout out to our the amazing men in our lives who support us and who stand behind us and who believes like, yes, whatever your dreams are, go for it and support the daughters and support the mothers. So thank you all. And I, I'm totally in agreement with that. And I'm inspired and have hope because of that as well. All right, Miss Stark. What say you about this? Well, I am totally confident that this injustice towards women will never be rectified till Jesus comes. Why do I say that? The injustice will never stop, so that number will keep growing. While we have come a long, long way in recognizing the value of women, and what they bring to the table. For example, we have many women who are now heads of large corporations, Fortune 500 corporations, such as CVS Health, General Mills or General Motors, UPS, Progressive Insurance, Fannie Mae, Best Buy, just to name a few. We also still have cultures and nations where a woman will never be recognized as worthy of equality and inclusion. In pondering uh, this dilemma, we as women have to do our best to prepare ourselves educationally emotionally and spiritually to step up to that table. And if there is no chair at the table for us, then by all means, build our own table and invite our own kind to the table. And let's see who has more fun. 
All right, my my job. Now you had me at I am confidence because I was like, whoa, Winnie's confident that this is gonna happen. So you got me. <laughs> 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 but you know, what I love about what you said is, you know, creating your own seat at the table. And that's happening more and more for women. I know sometimes you focus a lot on the marketplace, you know, especially in corporate America and women are creating their own seat at the table through entrepreneurship and um there are there is astounding progress that's been made in that area where women are using their natural skills and talents and right now society and we've moved to even more of a, a digital space where women can create things even from home and and i have hope for women who stay stay at home moms and to know that there are opportunities that can be created for them, right? To create a better life for their kids and for themselves, for their actual entire family. You know, I know women who they're the breadwinners now, the stay at home mom who then built a business and they're now the breadwinners. And I think in, in men are not in general, but there's a certain part of the population, various places are starting to recognize the value of what women bring, the, the ideas, the innovations that we have, and that we are business women, and that we can take a great idea and put it to work, mm -hmm. and it can change our entire family, and they are enjoying the fruits of that. So there is that undercurrent that's happening, but it, it's going to take us you know, continuing to be advocates for ourselves and for the next generation of women and come alongside the men who support us and encourage them to help their friends to understand and the, the guys in their circle to understand that we need the support. And I think it's just understanding women overall, right, about what we desire and that we want to do more and that we consider ourselves as your partner and say it say it not not just assume okay one day they'll figure it out we have to speak our voices have to be heard and be understood all right so because together we can do so much more and you know more and more men are realizing like mr hall you know hey it's you and michelle all the way hey <laughs> without michelle i don't know where i'll be right <laughs> so it's the same for me and my husband you know and then for women who have great dads in their life and great uncles, grandfathers, you name it. So it's gonna take everyone to make this movement continue to happen and to move this along and just to refuse to kick the can of this issue down the road and hope the next generation fixes it. So thank you, ladies. It's It's been such an amazing uh, conversation. And, and to wrap up, I just want you just to share your final thoughts and words for this evening and just also share with our listeners, how can they connect with you and how can they support you? All right, we'll get started with you, Winnie. Thank you. And thanks again, Wayne, for allowing us to visit with you and the listening audience on this platform. Um, it was indeed a pleasure to participate. Again, I'm with American Family Insurance, and a lot of you know the jingle, American Family Insurance. That's me. And you can look me up online. Uh, my phone number is 678-537-8425. And if you Google my name, Winnie Stark, you'll find me all over the place. So thank you. And I look forward to hearing from a lot of you. Thank you, Winnie. And now you're available, available for singing engagements too. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much for being here. Okay. How about you, Samantha? Um, Wayne, thank you so much for including me to be a part of this platform. It was absolutely great. Thank you um, to Miss Winnie, to the Honorable, you know, you're my, you're my she hero. You're my shiro. Uh, <laughs> and Jaquel, you did an amazing job. And to everyone that's watching and listening, thank you so much. Um, this was absolutely great. It's conversations like these, not just in the month of March, that we do need to continue having and taking the initiative, going into schools and, you know, wherever we can find that little girl, we need to find that little girl and bring that little girl along with us. Um, don't leave her behind. 
Um, right now, actually, June, we all know June is National Caribbean Heritage Month. And but I am actually going to be hosting the first McDonough International Gospel Concert. So if you go in, you can find it on Facebook, McDonough International Gospel Concert, actually not concert, festival in the city of McDonough that they sponsored by the city of McDonough. But you can find me on Facebook um, and Instagram. Yeah, I think, yes, <laughs> Facebook, Instagram and stuff like that. But um, so, but definitely I would, that's what I'm pushing out there is the gospel festival that will be coming on June 8th to kick off the National Caribbean Heritage Month. So thank you once again, and I truly appreciate being um, a part of this platform. Amazing. Well, we appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. All right, and now we're going to move to the Honorable, and I'm just going to give you the floor. Just take it over. <laughs> um, so let me start by thanking Wayne. Wayne. I'm sorry. Wayne, you don't have her music? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have the <laughs> Oh, my. Uh, yeah, y'all don't want me to act a fool right now. <laughs> um, but I want to thank um, Wayne um, for um, putting this together um, and uh, Winnie and Samantha for being um, part of with this panel with us. Uh, I think we had some really great conversation and really good things. And Jaquiel, you did an amazing job at uh, making this flow and uh, tying things together. And your, even your commentary were really good in, in between. So I wanna just really wanna thank everybody on this platform. Um, yes, I can't leave without, first of all, saying that this is this is an election year. And um, I wanted to make sure that people understood just exactly what this means. Um, I have too many people that come to me and say, I'm not into politics. And I like to stop them and say, look, politics is the process. Uh, this country is a republic with representative democracy. And in order for it to actually work, you have to select people to be your voice at the table. And so that's the political process. Uh, it, uh, it's about persuasion. And I'm, I'm asking everybody out there for their vote in Gwinnett County um, for me being the next chairwoman. But there's also the other part, it's called governing. And that is the bigger part. Um, we tax you and taxation without representation. This country went to war in 1776. Um, that's uh, 1770, I think four, I think 73, 74, 75, 76, they finally came to a conclusion where uh, and declared their independence from Great Britain because they didn't want to be taxed by Great Britain anymore. And so I ask you to make sure that you understand that your money should be used on behalf of you and the people that we share our society with and that it means that we provide services. Um, Ms. Winnie's in business. She sells a product or service. And obviously, um, f um, uh, her company wants to make a profit. So they're going to charge you a little bit more than it probably should. But that's the whole idea of business. Government doesn't work the same way. They take your money in taxation. And so that's the reason why you want proper representation. You want to do your homework to make sure you get people that are elected in office that will use your tax dollars on your behalf and provide you services. In saying so, we do have an election coming up. Um, it is a primary election and a lot of people get confused. Um, there is a November election, but before you get there, each party has to choose the people that are gonna be the, on the November ballot. And this is it. So you go and you will select a Democratic ballot, um, ballot or a Republican ballot. I will be on the Democratic ballot. And you wanna make sure you, you find people and research people that you know will do a good job for you. You mark your X in the box on, start on April 29th is when early voting starts and early voting will end on May 17th. The election day will be on May 21st. You will also have nonpartisan races, which are partisan by the way, but they call them nonpartisan. So you will have judges, judge races, as well as school board races on the ballot. Do not go for the nonpartisan ballot, please, because the nonpartisan ballot will only have the judicial race and the school board races in Gwinnett County. It might have some more. Pick a one or the other party, right? The Democratic Party or a Republican ballot. Take one or the other. Do not take the nonpartisan because you won't find all the candidates and all the candidates that you want to vote for will need to have your vote on that ballot. Again, I've asked everybody to be very intentional 
about what they do in society because there's a lot at stake. And it's not hyperbolical, hyperbolical to say that democracy is on the ballot. Um, democracy is something that we are all striving for. We have not gotten complete democracy, but the whole idea of this country is that it is a republic and that the people have to speak. That's why it's a, com a, a, a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And in order for it to work, the people have to participate. And so I ask very kindly and forcefully in some ways to make sure that you get out to the ballot and vote. Because knowledge is the most powerful thing you give to yourself, but the vote is the most powerful thing we give to each other in this country. And this country is going through some kind of metaphor forces, I guess, some kind of change. And we have to be mindful of the change, especially as of people of African descendant, because anytime there's change, we're always at the mercy of whoever is making the change. Stop being at the mercy of everybody's change. We need to step up and make sure that our voices are heard. We have a powerful tool and it's called voting. And I know that some people say, oh, I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not partaking in politics, but I remind people, you have a birth certificate and a death certificate. All of that comes from government. And so at the end of the day, your participation is required for this to work. And you cannot just say, I'm frustrated. I'm, I'm tired. This is exhausting because exhaustion and that's what people that don't want you to participate want you to be exhausted and tired. Believe me, I've, I've spent lots of months being exhausted and tired um, in the Georgia House. And I can tell you this much, back in 2020, after, in 2021, I was, I, I got emails with the cash, uh, the subject line, um, stop the steal, in which those emails were threatening my life because they didn't feel that um, Trump lost. And for those who think that this is a joke, it was not a joke. I got threats, death threats. And so I could say, you know what, I don't want any part of this, but I understand if I'm not at the table, I will truly be on the menu. And if our voices are not being heard, just like we're talking about women, it's the same thing. There's a lot of other things on the ballot and don't just stay on one issue. There's so many things and all of us are being affected and we have to care about our neighbors. We have to care about the people that we love. And especially for us as women, we've got to care about the younger women that are coming behind us. So for whom much is given, so much more is expected. And I expect that you will do what you need to do to make sure we have a society that we can all be proud of. Because at the end of the day, we're going to leave something behind. Let it be positive. Because I, I think Maya Angelou said it best. Don't, you know, people can tell you what, tell you something they can, you know, do something, but it is the way you make people feel by your actions. Make it mean something. Be intentional about doing good. Being good to your society, being good to the people you love, and being good to the family and the friends that we meet along the way in this journey. And I just ask you all for your vote in May, uh, in, the, in the May primary. And again, I ask everyone that's, that is listening to truly believe that we have the power to make changes, and we do. Thank you. Dana McLeod, when it's county, real chair person. And I want everybody help me sing. Food vibes. Ding a ling a ling, that not for the win. People ears cock up with the plans where she bring. Ding a ling a ling, that not for the win. That not my cloud is a cloud 19. Ding a ling a ling, that not for the win. People ears cock up with the plans where she bring. Ding a ling a ling, that not for the win. When they count the rich your person, Booyaka Booyaka just keep voting. Caribbean woman is a powerful thing. Leading and teaching, always giving, always supporting, uplifting. Love for the community, what a blessing Clean heart and she full of self-esteem Never selfish cause she work with a team Work with a team, yeah she work with a team Ding a ling a ling, that not for the win People ears cock up with the plans where she bring Ding a ling a ling, that not for the win That not my cloud is a cloud 19 Ding a ling a ling, that not for the win People ears cock <laughs> Thank you Wayne <laughs>
<laughs> oh, that's my favorite song, you know. I can't help it. Oh my gosh. I, you know what? Shaba and I need to come on. Shaba needs to come and come to help me out. Because Shaba, he know me. That's my song. That's my dance. <laughs> I'm a dance song queen when I wow. hear that song. What I will what dance to it as long as I can. I turned 56 this year, but I will dance to it as long as I can because it just makes me feel like home. And and, and just that knife on fuck a fight for dumpling. What? <laughs> that's Donna, that's a fight for the two dumplings. What? <laughs> Wow. Okay. Thank All right. You. That's Thank you. Awesome. All right. Well, well, there you have it. You know, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for this opportunity, the Wayne Hall show and honoring us, um, recognizing oh, us. Can I just Nina. say one more thing? Oh, yes. um, if anybody wants to follow me, you can follow me um, on all, almost all social media platform, Facebook, IG, um, X, uh, Tribal, Threads um, at Donna McLeod, M C L E O D, the number four U. Um, and also, you can go to my website at donnamcleod.com. And it's again, McLeod is M C L E O D. Thank right. you. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. So, an awesome way to wrap up International Women's Month. So, thank you so much, ladies. Honorable Donna McLeod, Miss Winnie Stark, Miss Samantha Samuels. And again, I'm your host, Jaquel Tucker, entrepreneur of the J. Tucker Group, My Purpose on Fire, and my nonprofit, The Jamaica Project USA. And the takeaways for this evening, right, everyone is, you know, for us ladies, know your worth, know your value, and use your voice. And when you are blessed with a seat at the table, use your voice and bring others along with you. And as Winnie said, if you don't get your own seat at the table, build your own and bring others in with you at that table. All right, so that's how we wanna leave this evening. And just to say thank you again to the men in our lives who support us and with you, Wayne Hall, for the Wayne Hall Show and for the amazing platform that this is. So thank you all, everyone. And ladies, keep rocking out the rest of the month with your birthday. Yeah, ting a ling a ling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. And so I want to say, Jack Hill, thank you so very much for making one of the most impressive platform debuts I've ever seen, hosting on the Wayne All Show for the first time. Thank you. Uh, thank this, you. yes, I want to thank Miss Winnie Stark, Mrs. Samantha Samuels, Miss Donna McLeod, for being willing participants as we continue to let the voice of women be heard, as you all pointed out. Yeah, I stand with three, my right. wife and two daughters, you know. And so I, I always say nothing will be more fulfilling than to see the strength in the woman that's around me. So I really appreciate you this evening. Thank you very much. I do like to sometimes bring in what some of the guests are saying on social media. So give me two minutes to go through real quick. All right. So. Janice O'Shea is saying, we didn't come to chairperson Donna McLeod on May 21st. Thank you for echoing that, Janice. Respect, Miss Donna, you have the right word, says Joan Lloyd. Cam Booster says, blessings. Yes, Donna T. McLeod, we're going out to vote for you, says Denise Otty. All right. Uh, Denise Otty is laughing at her music. Well, I don't know if you're still laughing, Denise. Great dialogue, ladies and host, Jaquel Winnie. Please mail me that cute topper. After the show, says Janice O'Shea. <laughs> Top-notch woman of substance, says Joan Lloyd. Donna T. McLeod for chairwoman, says Denise Hattie. Michelle Hannaford Hall. Oh, she's talking about me, my honey. Yes, <laughs> I, I get, okay, Mrs. Hall, thank you for listening. Let's <laughs> teach them how to love and respect themselves and still be fantastic, says Joan Lloyd. But woman, let's change the girl culture. Oh, boy. Create your own table and bring your own chair. Yes, they will think you are crazy, but hey, says Joan. All right, Michelle was clapping. I love this woman, says Joan Lloyd about Winnie Stark. Well, Joan, meet Winnie. Winnie, meet Joan. <laughs> All right. And so uh, Christine Marzuka says, I agree, Samantha. Kudos to Wayne. And that's as far as my Facebook page will let me scroll. So everyone who took part on social media, Thank you. Everyone who watched us live tonight, watched or listened on the different radio platforms, thank you so much for tuning in. Christine Rendell is over there in, in London, 
at what? Three, four in the morning listening to this conversation. And not just her, but everyone else. I really, truly appreciate you. So thank you, ladies. As always, you hit it out the park. I can count on my woman in my diaspora, in my circles, in my community. I'm very proud of you. And hence, we do this. I look forward to next year. Until, <laughs> ladies, have a great rest of your night. And thank you so much. Thank you. Cloud, when it comes to real cheer person, and I want everybody help me sing. Boot vibes. Ding a ling a ling, Dana for the win. People ears cock up with the plans where she bring. Ding a ling a ling, Dana for the win. Dana my cloud is a cloud 19. Ding a ling a ling, Dana for the win. People ears cock up with the plans where That's right, ladies and gentlemen, what a great show tonight. It was busy from the get go, but we pulled it off. I'm so grateful to my first guest, Mr. Dean Roden, who joined us. To talk about life under the reggae tree and his upcoming gospel show please follow mr dean roden his number is in the chat also want to say thank you to anthony turner for always bringing the latest and greatest with the e-report that came at 8 30. jay henry if anybody doesn't want to be in the atrium on next week friday night after hearing jay henry something's awfully off we're gonna pack that atrium okay and then man i cannot thank these awesome women enough they truly delivered on women's issues, women's uh, perseverance, hope, and everything else. So thank you so much to Miss Winnie Stark, Samantha Samuels, Donna McLeod, and our host, Miss Jekyll Tucker. Ladies and gentlemen, come booster, big up yourself, big up come booster. All right, all right, I gotta shout you out. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, thanks again. I'll be back next week. Same time, same place, same blazing stations with another edition of the Wayne All Show. Until then, Wayne All saying, see ya. Join us in celebrating Women's History Month by re-electing Patsy Austin Gatson, Gwinnett's first female district attorney. Under her leadership, the inaugural DA Citizen Academy was launched alongside groundbreaking programs designed to protect our youth and guide them towards positive futures. Support progress. Re-elect Patsy Austin Gatson for DA, a pioneer for justice and a champion for our children. Let's keep making history together. Sparkle D's Restaurant, authentic Caribbean food. 3370 Sugarloaf Parkway in Lawrenceville. We're open Tuesdays to Saturdays, 12 noon to 9 p.m. Come savor delectable Caribbean cuisine in our space. Enjoy music and dancing on the last Saturday of every month with your favorite DJs and Sunday brunch on the last Sunday of each month, 12 noon to 6 p.m. And we're open every Sunday, 12 noon to 8 p.m. Have your Sunday dinner with us. You can book Sparkle D's for your private parties, office parties, showers, and other special occasions. You can order ahead. Call 770-686-3600. You can also order through Uber Eats, Grubhub, and DoorDash. Sparkle D's Restaurant. We also cater. 3370 Sugarloaf Parkway, Lawrenceville, Georgia. Flavor of the Caribbean.